Hi there. In this video, I'll show you how to create a custom 2D collision shape for your 2D assets. I have imported a image of a rock into Buildbox. And if we go to the collision editor, we can see that the collision shape that we have for it is a cube. And we can adjust it and get it to fit the scale. But since our rock is not a cube, you can see that this is the closest we can get. And if you want the collision shape to follow all those breaks in the rocks, you'll have to create your custom collision shape. So let's undo those changes. And to create a custom collision shape, you'll have to use some 3D modeling software. And we'll be using Blender for this. Blender is free, so you can download it and follow along if you like. When we open Blender, uh, we start with a cube. You can select a cube, click X, and select the delete option. That deletes our cube. And then what you wanna do is switch your view to look at the Y axis. And you can do that by using this widget right here. And the one that you want is this green one right here. There's also a shortcut on the number pad, which is number one, but we'll just click on this green circle and our view switches. Now what you wanna do is add that rock asset to your view and you can just simply drag and drop it. And you want to make sure that it's positioned in the middle. And you can do that by going to the transform and setting zeros for all X, Y, and Z. The rotation is set to 90 degrees and that's because we're looking in the Y axis. And for scaling, there is a difference between Buildbox scaling and Blender scaling. And the difference in scaling depends on the size of the image. And I know for this image, the scaling difference is 0.275. We'll change that scale in Blender, so we won't have to change the scale in Buildbox later. But you'd probably be better off by just leaving the scale at 1 and then adjusting the scale in Buildbox to get the shape to fit the image. So let's zoom in by scrolling. And it's time to create our collision shape. To start working our collision shape, we will be starting with a plane. And to add the plane, we can go to the add option right here at the top, or you can use a shortcut shift A. And we're adding a mesh. And under mesh, we have the option for a plane. We select plane, and you can see that we have a selected line right here. And the reason why we can't see the plane is because the plane is facing the other way. So what you want to do is go to transform and under rotation, we want to rotate it on X axis by 90 degrees. And now that aligns it. Now we can go back to our Y axis view by clicking on that green circle or number pad one. And to start editing our mesh, what you want to do is click tab. And when you click tab, we switch to edit mode. Previously we we're in object mode and now we are in edit mode and the shortcut for the switch is the tab. So make sure that you are in the edit mode. Once you're in edit mode, you can start moving around the vertices. So to move around the vertices, you need to select one. So you either click on that one or you can drag select the vertice. And to move, you can switch to move mode and then start moving around those vertices. Select the next one. When I create collision shapes, I like to keep the collision shape smaller than the object itself. It's your choice if you want to do that or not. Now we've placed four of those vertices and we need one, two, three more vertices to create the shape of this rock. To add more vertices, we can go back to the selection tool and select the top two vertices and then right click and we have the option for the subdivide. When we click subdivide, we get another vertice added in the middle, but we need three more vertices and you can change the number of cuts by going to the subdivide option right here and set that to three. Now we have three vertices. You can go back to the move tool. Another way you can move vertices around, you can go back to the select tool and select the vertice and on keyboard, you can click G or grab and that will give you the ability to move those vertices so it's whatever you prefer you can use the keyboard G shortcut to move around or you can go to the move tool okay now we've created the shape of our rock 
What we want to do now is switch back to our object mode and we can do that by either selecting in the options right here, the object mode, or using the tab. We want to make sure that the plane that we just created is selected and you can check that in the hierarchy. So here's our plane, we have it selected. Now it's time to export our object. So let's go to file, export. We have the OBG option right here. So let's click on OBG and we can name our export file and just rock.obg. And one more thing that we have to do before exporting is in the options for include, we want to export only the selected object. And for that, we need to check the selection only option. Once we did that, we can click export object and that file should be created. Now we go back to build box. If we select our collision shape and for our collision shape, now we can use either hull or mesh. Hull is a convex shape. So if your model is a concave shape, if you select the hull option, it will convert your concave shape to our convex shape. And our rock is a concave shape. So if you don't want it to be converted to a convex shape, you'll need to use the mesh option. There's a drawback to it. And if you're interested to know more about collision shapes, be sure to check out our collision shape video. It has a lot of information there. And once we select a mesh, we can now find our rock object in whatever location you saved it. And we can drag it and drop it for our collision mesh. Once we do that, if it's not displaying the collision shape, we can toggle the collision shape mode on or off and that will get it displayed. And here is our custom collision shape that we just imported. Now let's switch our physics to static. And to demonstrate how the collision shape works, let's add a circle. And now let's select it. Make sure we turn on dynamic mode on it. We'll switch it to a sphere collision shape. Let's add it inside our scene. And we'll scale it down to 0.1. Place it somewhere around here. Let's check our collision shapes. Okay, let's click preview. And as you can see, our circle is not touching the collision shape. So let's switch to debug mode and see what's going on. Let's try it again. And we can see that our collision shape for a circle is not actually what it shows in the collision shape editor. In the collision shape editor, it shows that it fits perfectly, but it's not what we just saw in the preview. So since we scaled our circle by 0.1, let's try scaling our sphere by 0.1 also. And let's click preview now. And now that looks better. So that bug might be fixed when you're watching this. And this is how our custom collision shape looks like and it works. One more thing, you might have noticed that there are lines that were added to our mesh. We didn't have those when we we're creating the model. And those lines were added to create triangle shapes and they were added automatically. If you're creating complex shapes, when those lines get added automatically, they might be added in a way that it might mess up your shape. If you want to control that, instead of subdividing a line, you would probably want to use the extrude option. And how you do that in Blender, you go to the edit mode. And when extruding, you want to switch to use the edge selection. So it's right here. And then when you select one edge, you can either click the extrude region option here or use the E for extrude. And that extrudes a edge. And then you can modify the vertices of that. Also, when creating complex shapes, you have to be careful with the amount of points that you add. Because when you're adding more points, you're creating more points where physics needs to be calculated. And as I've noticed, if you try to create a wave collision shape, to make it smooth, you need a lot of vertices to follow that wave. And when you do that, Buildbox has a lot of glitches with calculating physics for that kind of shape. If you found this video helpful, click on the like button, subscribe to our channel, and until next time.